Welcome to Aisha University of Surakarta. Aisha University of Surakarta is a higher education institution owned by the Asia Organization, the biggest Islamic women organization in Indonesia. We are the transformation from Aisha Surakarta Health Sciences College and officially transformed on February 18, 2020. Having a future vision to become a superior competitive university based on Islamic values progressing at the national level by 2025, the campus has been accredited B and in 2020, it became the best Aisha college in Indonesia. According to Simkat Mawa version, we have two main campus in Surakarta City. There are three faculties and nine study programs such as Faculty of Health Sciences, Focus on Nursing, Midwifery, and Physiotherapy. Faculty of Economics and Business, Focus on Business Retail Management and Entrepreneurship. Faculty of Science and Technology, Focus on System and Information Technology. To improve the education quality for the whole campus family, we provide Digital Library, Multimedia, CBD, Clinical Laboratory, Entrepreneurship, Integrated Mini Hospital, Aisha Medical Center, Full AC Classroom, Digital Based Service System, Canteen and Sports Arena. And we have cooperation with a lot of campuses in Asia and in Europe. In addition, the campus also holds job fair activities every year to absorb campus graduates into the world of work. And what's different from other campuses? Asia University Surakarta has the most affordable tuition fees in Solaraya and the only university belonging to the largest women's organization in Indonesia. So what are you waiting for? Come join us, Asia University of Surakarta, leading in character qualities. Hello, I am Daniel Williams. I am from Houston, Texas, which is in America. I got a scholarship to study at Asia Surakarta, which is located in central Java. I choose Asia Surakarta because they're very professional. The organization that's responsible is Asia, which is part of the broader Muhammadiyah organization, which is an amazing organization which has been doing absolutely amazing things across Indonesia and actually across the world. They're in many countries and very professional and have a long track record of education and helping the community and helping the world really. And I choose Aisha Surakarta because the teachers are very knowledgeable, very smart, very professional too. And the students are very friendly, very welcoming and very helpful. Anything I need I got it. Even if I need a doctor checkup, I could get it for free on campus. And they're very highly accredited and it's recognized all over the world once you get a degree from here. And it's a lot cheaper than in like a western country. So what are you waiting for? Come and join Aisha Surakarta. You could easily go to the website and contact the WhatsApp located on the website. Thank you.
Welcome to Aisha University of Surakarta. Aisha University of Surakarta is a higher education institution owned by the Asia Organization, the biggest Islamic women organization in Indonesia. We are the transformation from Aisha Surakarta Health Sciences College and officially transformed on February 18, 2020. Having a future vision to become a superior competitive university based on Islamic values progressing at the national level by 2025, the campus has been accredited B and in 2020, it became the best Aisha college in Indonesia. According to Simkat Mawa version, we have two main campus in Surakarta City. There are three faculties and nine study programs such as Faculty of Health Sciences, Focus on Nursing, Midwifery, and Physiotherapy. Faculty of Economics and Business, Focus on Business Retail Management and Entrepreneurship. Faculty of Science and Technology, Focus on System and Information Technology. To improve the education quality for the whole campus family, we provide Digital Library, Multimedia, CBD, Clinical Laboratory, Entrepreneurship, Integrated Mini Hospital, Aisha Medical Center, Full AC Classroom, Digital Based Service System, Canteen and Sports Arena. And we have cooperation with a lot of campuses in Asia and Europe. In addition, the campus also holds job fair activities every year to absorb campus graduates into the world of work. And what's different from other campuses? Asia University Surakarta has the most affordable tuition fees in Solaraya and the only university belonging to the largest women's organization in Indonesia. So what are you waiting for? Come join us, Asia University of Surakarta, leading in character qualities. Hello, I am Daniel Williams. I am from Houston, Texas, which is in America. I got a scholarship to study at Asia Surakarta, which is located in central Java. I choose Asia Surakarta because they're very professional. The organization that's responsible is Asia, which is part of the broader Muhammadiyah organization, which is an amazing organization which has been doing absolutely amazing things across Indonesia and actually across the world there in many countries and very professional and have a long track record of education and helping the community and helping the world really. And I choose Aisha Surakarta because the teachers are very knowledgeable, very smart, very professional too. And the students are very friendly, very welcoming and very helpful. Anything I need, I got it. Even if I need a doctor checkup, I could get it for free on campus and they're very highly accredited and it's recognized all over the world once you get a degree from here and it's a lot cheaper than in like a western country so what are you waiting for come and join Aisha Surakarta you could easily go to the website and contact the whatsapp located on the website thank you Okay. Good morning, everyone. Okay, still waiting for the others 
participants to join in this room. And I want to try to greet participants from TIHTC. Good morning in Taiwan. Hello. Is my voice clearly? Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me inform you first that uh, for the whole activity of this International Visiting Lecture, I will use English as the whole communication in this agenda. So I hope you guys can students understand everything I said, including the rule for this activity. Okay, let me inform you first for the rule for this activity. There will be participants from Asia University of Surakarta are expected to always turn on the video camera during the activity. Participants must turn off the microphone during the activity. And we ask to everyone, make sure you have registered on the registration link that we shared earlier. And for AISCA students, only for AISCA students, I ask you to rename your Zoom name by writing AISCA underscore name underscore study program. For example, AISCA underscore Joko underscore Diploma 3 midwifery program. And for the question and answer session, we invite participants to ask questions through chat rooms. You can write down text on the chat room, chat box, especially. And then you can do raise hand by clicking the raise hand button at the down on the Zoom window. Also, you have to turn your camera on. And we hope that all of the participants can be calm and respectful because Today, there will be an extraordinary guest for this visiting lecture in the next. It's me, I want to greet the staff participants from TIHTC. Good morning, Taiwan. Good morning. Okay, there are so many ice class students here. Hello, good morning, students. Good morning. Morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Extraordinary. It's okay that I will use English for this whole activity. Are you ready, guys? Yes, yes I'm ready. ready. Yes, ready. You are the ice class students. You're the best. So you will ready for everything. Okay, let's try to uh, greet the people from Taiwan. We try again. I think there is no connection, but let me try. Good morning, Taiwan. TISTC staff, are you there? Um. Hello, Taiwan. Is my voice clear? Can you hear my voice?
Hello, Taiwan. There are three or four THTC representatives for this agenda as the co-host, especially. Hello, good morning, everyone from Taiwan. Hello, good morning. For uh, THEC, NTU, and HS, uh, the sound is really clear. For TISTC, maybe we still need to wait for a moment. Okay. Is it Mr. Arik? Yes. Oh, really, really good. Nice guess from me. <laughs> Just wait for a moment. Uh, I'll try to get contact to TISTC. Okay, I'll wait for that. Okay, we're just waiting for the TIHTC to connect to us. Uh, before it, let me inform again for the rule for this activity. Uh, first of all, there are a lot of uh, rules here. The first is participants from Aisha University, Surakarta, are expected to always turn on the video camera during the activity. Then participant must turn off the microphone during the activity. We also ask that everyone make sure you have registered on the registration link that we shared earlier. For ISCA students, please rename your name on Zoom by writing ISCA underscore name underscore study program. For example, ISCA underscore Joko, underscore Diploma 3 of Nursing. For the question and answer session, you can try to ask question by writing on the chat box. And also you can do raise hand by clicking the raise hand button down on the Zoom window. And then we hope that all participants can be calm and respectful because there will be an extraordinary guest for today, International Visiting Lecturer from Taiwan. Okay, well, that's the rule that we can convey. Hopefully all participants can obey them and make today even run well and smoothly without any problems. And thank you for your kind cooperation, guys. Okay, just waiting for the three minutes to go at 8.30 Indonesian time or at 9.30 for Taiwan's time. Good morning, Mr. Arik. Hi, good morning. Yeah, still waiting for the TISTC representative yeah, to join. Yes, I have I had to contact them uh, mm -hmm. to uh, at least to check the sound for a okay. uh, virtual meeting, but still uh, uh, do not reach at the moment. Just wait. But I see three of them are joined already, right? Excuse me, can you repeat again? I can hear your voice clearly. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, three of them are joined already, right? I think I think it's connected already. Yeah, they were connected already.
Hello, good morning, the ISTC. Good morning. Hi. 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 Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hey, hello, Mr. Lauren. Hi. Is it clear? Yeah. Yes, your voice clearly here for me here. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Risky. Is it possible for you to take off your mask? Uh, I'm sorry. We are here at the one room, just separated by uh, what is it? Like a uh, okay, okay, something. Okay. So we can't open this mask. Okay, sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> Okay. Alright, everyone. Okay, all right, everyone. I think the engineer will begin shortly at 8.30. At Taiwan now is 9.30, is that right? Yes, is that correct? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, can we start now? Or there's something to be prepared again? Okay, all right, everyone. Uh, attention, please. We will start in a moment in the countdown. Okay, first of all, let us give thanks to our God for his abundance of grace. We can all be here in a good health, even though on this occasion we have to meet in an online room. Blessing and salutation to our prophet, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the guidance for us to the light of our life. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Rector of Aisha University of Surakarta and the staff. The Honorable Superintendent of TIHTC, Taipei Hospital, Ministry of Health and Welfare. All lecturers from Aisha University of Surakarta all of the representatives from both sides, and all beloved students. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the online international visiting lecturer, Aisha University of Surakarta 2021, lesson learned from the health technology aspect in using insurance database during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, let me introduce myself first. My name is Rizky Lisiantono as the master of ceremony for the two days activity. 
let me inform first that today's international visiting lecturer is organized by IECI University of Surakarta, Taiwan International Healthcare Training Center, TIHTZ, National Taipei University of Nursing and Health Sciences, NTUNHS, and Taipei Indonesia Health Education Care, TIHEC. Then allow me to read out visiting lecture schedules for today. The first is opening ceremony, and then continued by reading Holy Quran, singing Indonesia Raya, Mars Sang Syria, and Mars Aisia, and continued by MOU signing ceremony. There will be four agenda in here. The first is speech from rector of Aisia University of Surakarta. The second, speech from superintendent of TIHTC, Taipei Hospital. The third, MOU signing ceremony. The fourth is group photo. Then continued by introduction or presentation for TIHTC. Then the main agenda is visiting lecturer activity with the theme lesson learned from the health technology aspect in using health insurance database during the COVID-19 pandemics. After that is discussion, question and answer, and the last is closing. Thus, the schedule of events that we can convey. And we arrive at the session of reading the Holy Quran, which will be read by Ms. Nurul Nuha our students of third semester at Aisha University of Surakarta. A'udhu billahi minash Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wassamai wa tariq wa ma adraka ma tariq an-najmusakib in Innahu ala raja'ihi la qadir Yawma tubala sara'ir Fama lahu min quwatin wala nasir Wassama idhati raja' Wal aradhi zati sadr Innahu la qawlu fasa Wa ma huwa bil hadu Innahum yakidu na kaida Wa akidu kaida Famahilil kafirina amhilhum ruwaida Sadaqallahul azim Thank you for Ms. Nurul Nuha. Next agenda is singing the national anthem of Indonesia Raya, and followed by the Mars Sang Surya song, and ending with the Mars Aisha song. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we beg you to be respectful.
Next agenda at 9.45 or 8.45 in Indonesia time is the MOU signing ceremony. 
as a form of good cooperation between Aisha University of Surakarta and TISTC, the process of signing a cooperation agreement for MOU. But firstly, allow me to introduce the representative from the campus. The first is Mrs. Riani Ulandari, Master of Nursing, as the rector of Aisha University of Surakarta, who will give her opening speech and sign the document of MOU. Besides that, there are also Mrs. Siti Fatmawati, Master of Nursing, as the Vice Rector of Academic Affairs. Next, Mrs. Dewi Kartikasari, Master of Midwifery Program, Vice Rector of Monetary Affairs. The fourth, Mrs. Leli Virahmawati, Master of Midwifery, Vice Rector of Students Affairs. The fifth, Dean of Health Science Faculty, Dean of Business and Economic, and the last is Dean of Science and Technology. For the first opportunity, we invite the Rector of Aisha Surakarta, Mrs. Riani Ulandari, Magister of Nursing, to give her welcoming speech. Time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Superintendent of Chaipe Hospital, the Honorable Speaker, Prof. Chin Ye Shu, the Honorable Lecturers of Aisyah University of Surakarta, and Distinguished Visiting Lecture Participants. Let us give thanks to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who has been giving us blessing and mercies, so we can attend and participate in this visiting lecture organized by Aisyah University of Surakarta. Greetings and salutation upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who has touched us respectfully in order to attain happy and prosperous life in this world year after. Distinguished guests, we want to say a hug thank you to the Honorable Speaker for thanking their time to share knowledge and experiences in this event. Aisia University of Surakarta welcomes and give high appreciation for the implementation of the visiting lecture by involving resources persons from one of our cooperation partners at the international level, National Taipei University of uh, Nursing and Health Sciences. The visiting lecturer even by presenting resources from person from international cooperation partners will become a regional agenda in the future as concrete evidence of our intention to go international. In relation to the theme rise at this general stage, lesson learned from the head technology aspect in using head insurance database during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is very relevant to the situation and condition that we are still experiencing and also we are still struggling to survive in health and safety during the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 pandemic has put great pressure and impact on the world, including Indonesia. This impact has a significant impact on both the health and non-health sectors. From the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic in Indonesia and around the world, there are valuable lessons that we must continue to improve in various fields and respond early to the pandemic to determine success in controlling it. Evidence-based planning and budgeting in accelerating the handling of COVID-19 will increase our readiness to face this pandemic in the future. The COVID-19 outbreaks has exposed major flaws in Indonesia's cracking national health insurance program, which has not been able to properly provide service in this uh, disparate time, with an infection disease spreading fast across the archipelago. The government has been forced to devise 
work around to ensure that the healthcare and social security agency or BPJS Kesehatan which administers the government's national health insurance or JKN program can reassure the public of its role in the pandemic despite coming up against legal barriers. Government also instructed BPJS Kesehatan to ensure the COVID-19 patients can get access to medical services given that many hospitals have secure arrangements with BPJS to treat the insurance scheme participants which could further drain valuable resources required for treating infected patients. Now we are entering the era of HeadCal 4.0 with uh, the increasingly with widespread use of artificial intelligence, big data, internet of things, telemedicine and precision medicine. There are also several other practical aspects in the daily use of health services 4.0, such as the use of robots in hospitals or a kind of watch that also measure our health indicator. In addition, 3D printing is in the process of making medical devices, including orthotic and prosthetic issue laboratory tests as a try. From a policy perspective, what had organization, the development of the healthcare 4.0 era was marked by the launch of the World Health Assembly Resolution on Digital Health in 2018. This, uh, interestingly, Indonesia is one of proponent of this resolution along uh, which of 14 other countries. This digital head resolution bring a new capture in uh, global head services and is expected to be one of the main way to achieve the head goals of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. All countries will also cover aspects of head promotion, disease prevention, and will improve access, reach, and quality of health services in a various parts of the world. It was also stated that also technology and innovation will indeed be able to improve health services. Human interaction remain a very important component in human health and well-being. And of course later, our speaker will explain a lot about the application of health technology in the use of database health insurance during the COVID-19 pandemic in more detail and can develop with a various more in-depth and interesting discussion. Good luck with the process. I hope you all enjoy the event process well and take many benefits in terms of knowledge as well as new knowledge and experiences from the event. We hope this visiting lecture event will run smoothly and we would like to extend a hug congratulations to everyone who participated in this event. We hope all of you can get many benefits from this event and we apologize for any mistake our remarks have uh, caused. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hey, thank you, Mrs. Ruyani, for the welcoming speech as the rector of IUCN University of Surakarta. The next chance is a welcoming speech from superintendent of TISTC, and it will be guided directly by the team from TISTC. All right, we try to invite the TISTC team to carry out the session. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Risky. So um, today we're so delighted to have this online summit ceremony with uh, a CIA University of Surakarta. And now allow me to introduce the administrators of Taipei Hospital. So uh, first superintendent, Dr. Shengping Zhen, Zhen Shengping Yuanchang. Good morning. Okay, and next is morning. our deputy superintendent, 
Director of Nursing Department, Mrs. Xianhua Guo, Guo Xianhua. Hello, hello. And next is our Secretary General, Mrs. Su Ling Liao, Liao Su Ling Mi Shu. Hi, good morning. Okay, next is the Director of Information Management Department, Mr. Li Feng Wang, Wang Li Feng Zhu Ren. Hi, good morning. And last is the Director of International Healthcare Training Center, Ms. Jessica Zhang, Zhang Ming Xuan Zhu Ren. Okay, so uh, right now, I think uh, it's time for superintendent to have uh, the welcome remarks for the uh, Taipei Hospital and the Sai University Resort. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Distinguished guests, Thank you for joining us on this momentous occasion. On behalf of Taipei Hospital, I would like to extend my warmest greeting to all of you. It's a great pleasure to host and open this online MOU sign ceremony with the ICR University of Surakarta. Appointed by Ministry of Health and Welfare, Taipei Hospital has been committed to the execution of Taiwan International Healthcare Training Center. We have trained almost 250 healthcare professionals from Indonesia and organized web seminar with our Indonesian partners. This year, we are also having almost 100 Indonesian participants join our online training. We are delighted to further our collaborative relationship by signing this agreement with ICR University of Surakarta. We look forward to improving the health for all in this region and have more international healthcare professionals from Indonesia to join us in the near future. The sign of this agreement would usher in a new chapter of cooperation and strengthen the partnership with your university. I'm sure the day sign ceremony will be fruitful for both sides. Hope to see you soon in Taiwan. Thank you, Terma Kashi. <laughs> okay, thank you, Superintendent. So I think right now we can move on to the MOU signing, Mr. Risky. Hello. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, thanks for the PITC for guiding the speech and introduction of its representative. And now we are entering the agenda of signing the MOU between ICI University of Surakarta and PITC. Okay, I think that's about right. Okay, Mr. Risky, uh, our yeah. sprinter had signed the MOU. Okay, Should yeah. We take Thank the you photo? show the photo in the front of camera. Okay. Yeah, hold the second. We'll take the crucial part, documentation. Okay, that's enough. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anibal Thank you. Okay, so okay. Uh, right now, let's move on to the photo session. So uh, 
we would like to, I would like to in, uh, invite our guests to take a group photo with you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we're ready over here. Yeah. Okay, for everyone, I guess students, please open your camera and we'll take a picture with you. To ISCA students and all of the representatives from ISIA, Surakarta, please open your camera, send your video. We'll take the group photo session at this time. Three, two, one, and take a picture. Okay. The next slide. Maybe two slides. Okay. The next slide. Okay. Wait a second. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we have another photo taking. It's with this. Uh, this. <laughs> oh, you use some like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Another pose for the photo session. That's all right. Okay. For everyone, high school students and representative lecturer, please thumbs up like this, and we'll take the screenshot the documentation for this. Come on, everyone. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, the next slide again. Okay, yeah, okay. Give applause, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Lauren, are you talking? Hello, so can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So um, right now we're moving on to the uh, introduction of CIHTC. Yes. Okay, so uh, Taiwan International Healthcare Training Center, TIHTC, is a healthcare training platform supervised by the Ministry of Health and Welfare, dedicated to provide healthcare training for all professionals working in the related field and thrive to improve health for all. In the past 19 years, over 1,800 healthcare professionals from 72 countries have received training through TIHTC, including doctors, nurses, professors, healthcare administrators, health officers, and so forth. So right now, let's take a look on how our training is like and get to know more about our upcoming digital health online training. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Harsh Jakhedia from India. Last year I joined Taiwan International Healthcare Training Center's Dermatopathology Training Program. Wanna see how my life is like in Taiwan? Let's get going. This is our training lab. Let's go. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My clinical training consists of routine sign outs, 
weekly review of typical and atypical cases on Wednesdays, clinical pathological conferences on every Thursday, immunofluorescence and electron microscopy reporting, learning from archived slides and cases, and monthly self-assessment and topic tests. Dr. Wu is a great mentor and great teacher. If you have interest in dermatopathology, I would definitely recommend this program. The level of uh, medical service in Taiwan is, I think, is outstanding. It's uh, very amazing. We also have many medical centers and provide uh, advanced medical care for the students or the uh, scholars. We have a very good uh, subspecialty training or specialty trainings. For the training of dermatopathology, this is a very subspecialty. Not many training centers can do this job. There is an international committee for dermatopathology. They will accredit the uh, training center in the world. There's only two sites in Asia. The site in Taipei, our program, is the first accredited program for this ICDP. This is also a, a major site of Asian Society of Dermatopathology and I'm the current president of uh, ASD. We will provide many, many teaching resources. So if you come to our programs, hope that can help in your future career. Those are from the same sales. It's lunchtime. Lunchtime. Lunch time. Lunch time. Lunch time. Lunch Good time. break. I love Taiwanese food so much. Taiwan breakfast restaurants are pretty common and they would be open from early morning till afternoon. I got my joy open. Yay! TSTC is just like my family in Taiwan. We always have fun and celebrate all the special days together. We make rice dumplings during the Dragon Boat Festival. We twerk and dance at the year-end party. We celebrate the Christmas and open the gifts together. We have birthday parties every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone stay safe, stay happy and stay healthy. Thanks to THTC, I have experienced almost every aspect of the Taiwanese culture. I would really like to thank THTC for giving me such an indelible training experience. Not only do they have a wonderful dorm room which makes me feel at home but they also help me find the best hospital for my clinical training. Everything I've learned during my training would be conducive to the reinforcement of my profession. Congratulations. Thank you. And you're learning in Taiwan. Thank you, thanks a lot. I love Taiwan, I love the HTC. Your first choice of clinical training platform. Taiwan is known for its outstanding medical advancement and healthcare coverage worldwide. Its medical system is widely acknowledged by all the medical institutions, organizations, and media. Now, let's see some of the highlights in the development of Taiwan's advanced healthcare system. Good day, participants of the online project program from all over the world. I'm Ms. Xianhua Guo, the convener of Taiwan International Healthcare Training Center, TIHTC. I would like to extend my warmest welcome to all of you to be the part of our training. This year, due to the ongoing COVID-19, TIHTC continue to provide online project training so that medical professionals around the world can still further their medical training despite the pandemic. As an international healthcare training institution, we are proud to announce that the 2021 online project training is now officially open. Thank you for joining us in the development of international healthcare cooperation. Thank you. CIHTC welcomes you on board to Group Health for All.
Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you so much for CISTC. Thank you for Mr. Lauren for introducing your institution to us. And now we come to the main session in today's activity. It is a visiting lecturer activity. And here with us, the main speaker, the lecturer, Professor Qian Ye Se from Professor at National Taipei University of Nursing and Health Sciences, NTUNHS Taiwan, from Department of Information Management. And will be guided by our moderator, Mrs. Kaning Tias Prabasari, for the material to the question and answer session. Okay, firstly, uh, please pay attention to all of the ISCA students. Hello, good morning, students. Okay. Morning. 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 Are you Morning. happy today? Sure, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy, healthy. Okay. Marvelous. Okay. Are you ready to this agenda? <laughs> Inshallah. Yeah, I'm ready. Right. Okay. Uh, Just pay attention a lot and give the best. Please be active, students. Yeah. Okay. Now. Let me order to Ms. Siska Ningtias Prabhasari to handle all the main lecture session. All right, to Ms. Siska, time is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rizky. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the International Visiting Lecture 2000. And 21 with the theme of lesson learned from the health technology aspect in using health insurance database during the COVID-19 pandemic conducted by Asia University of Surakarta. Thank you for providing time to attend this, this lecture event. I am Siska, the moderator of today's event. I'm very happy to see you here and welcome all of you to this event. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please mute the microphone of the video during the presentation. If you have any questions, you can write it down on the chat room. The question will be summarized and answered at the Q&A session. Before we move on to the material session, I would like to read the curriculum vitae of the keynote speaker. Our speaker today is Professor Chin Yesu. For his educational background, he finished his doctoral program of language and hearing science at, at Ohio State University and electrical engineering for his master program also at Ohio State University. Prof. Su is currently the chairman of the Department of Information Management at National Taipei University of Nursing and Health Science. He is also a professor of the master program in global health and development at Taipei Medical University. Prof. Su also served as the president of Taiwan Association for Medical Informatics and also being a senior executive of Advisory Committee of HIMSS Analytics Asia. He has been working on various topics in medical informatics for more than 20 years. His professional experiences was being a president of Taiwan eHealth Association, also a board member of HIMSS Asia Pacific Governing Council, and he used to be a board member of Taiwan Association for Nursing Informatics. Prof. Su continues to contribute his effort in networking with partners to share his knowledge and experience on medical informatics and health management. He continues to share his experience on the country's national health insurance and on hospital information system best practices. He is expecting to contribute to the further development of information technology in improving patient care across the Pan Asia region. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have one and a half hour of the presentation duration. So let's welcome our speaker today. Prof. Su, the time is yours. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, um, can you hear my voice? Yes. My voice? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Um, yes, but it's too small. <laughs> Could you please increase your voice? 
can we make it louder? Okay, uh, I will. I will try to speak louder. Is that okay? Okay, Professor. All right, all right. So, um, uh, thank you for the invitation, uh, President uh, um, Riyani uh, Wulandari, uh, and uh, thank you for the um, introduction from uh, Miss uh, Siska. And uh, good morning to all the audience uh, from the Asia University of uh, Surakarta. Uh, today, uh, I would uh, give you this presentation uh, about uh, the lesson learned from the health technology aspect in using health insurance database during the COVID-19 pandemics. Um, I I must admit that uh, this is a very complicated um, issue uh, because uh, a COVID-19 pandemic is a very a serious uh, disease, uh, which is very complicated. And also the health insurance uh, in Taiwan, uh, we call the national health insurance, which is also a, a big uh, project and uh, uh, long-term construction in Taiwan uh, since the 1995 uh, we already have the national health insurance for more than 25 years so so how do we uh, use this uh, health insurance uh, technology in uh, COVID-19 pandemics so today I think I will um, uh, divided uh, my presentation into three parts. The first part, I will give you a short introduction uh, about uh, the national health insurance uh, in Taiwan. And the second part, I will uh, try to uh, uh, describe uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, tasks we did uh, in this COVID-19 pandemics um, uh, uh, time and also uh, last part will I will present some of the uh, application uh, we use uh, all the above of the uh, technologies okay let's Hello, Professor. Are you still there? I think there is problem in connection. Okay. Okay, we will wait for the recovery of the connection. Okay. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> I can I can hear your voice.
Hello, Professor. Could you please increase your voice? Because I can't hear your voice. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you? I, I think you can hear my voice. Okay. 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 Right now I can hear. And also the PowerPoint. All right. It looks okay from here. Yes. Okay. So here is the, he's a Taiwan. We are not very far from Indonesia. And I will, okay, some of the data uh, I can show you here about uh, Taiwan. So the area, the population, um, the age over 65 um, is more than 14% increasing. And our GDP, I think uh, this year uh, is very close to 30,000. And the national health expenditure uh, is, uh, is more than 1,000 per capita. And uh, also the, the, uh, the, the health expenditure in our GDP is uh, about 6.6%. Uh, um, and our life expectancy uh, is about uh, 80 years. Okay, so uh, the major feature of national health insurance, um, okay, you can see from this page, uh, which is a single payer started in 1995. So uh, since, uh, um, today, it, it is more than 25 years. Uh, and uh, and uh, the NHI is uh, universal coverage comprehensive and the uniform benefit, um, unlimited the freedom of choice. There's, there's no uh, gatekeeper. So you, we, can, we can choose uh, um, any doctors and any hospital we like to see. And uh, also, and it is easy access and the timely service, uh, acceptable quality of care, affordable cost. Um, the premium we pay for the national health insurance is uh, compared to many other countries, which is very low. So uh, almost everyone uh, who, uh, who is uh, enrolled in the NHI, uh, we, we, we just need to pay a little bit a very low a premium. And so there is a high public satisfaction from the government. We have a survey. So the uh, people are satisfied the national health insurance. And also very important, uh, which is I, health IT adoption. Uh, information technology adopted in this uh, insurance system. So uh, we build a very uh, a complicated and complete uh, internet uh, network uh, when we um, established the national health insurance. Uh, from these years, the, the network has been uh, uh, improved uh, so many times. So, so right now, uh, I, I will show you uh, all the, in, uh, the connections and all the information has been uh, exchanged on this uh, network. So there are several uh, IT adoption uh, project of, uh, starting very early on 1988. And also 1998, um, well, currently we call the Taiwan Health Cloud. So everything uh, will build uh, on, the, on the cloud system, health cloud system. Okay. Some of the data again, um, we can see the it is more than 99% um, uh, pop uh, um, population is covered by the National Health Insurance, no waiting list. And uh, because uh, it is so easy to, to see doctors, so it is very high, the outpatient visit, uh, which is uh, about 15 times uh, a year average for everyone. So. Uh, compared to many countries in the world, uh, this number is, com is, kind, is kind of high. And uh, we have around uh, 34,000 physicians in Taiwan and uh, about uh, 600 hospitals in Taiwan ranked into three levels, uh, three levels which, uh, which are 
um, a central a central hospital central a center hospital center and uh, our area hospital and uh, local hospital three levels from bigger to um, medium and small uh, and about uh, two uh, twenty thousand uh, primary health uh, care clinics in Taiwan and most of them are all covered by national health insurance so the major trend of medical informatics in Taiwan, uh, I, I can say that, uh, which is uh, um, uh, there, there are four, four um, stages. So from virtualization, which is uh, also can be called uh, digitization. And uh, that means uh, we digitize everything uh, in the hospital. Um, well, I, I need to say that it is all related to national health insurance, because um, when we build an, an NHI system, uh, gradually in a very short period of time, uh, NHI required our hospital uh, sending their uh, claim data uh, uh, digitally. So our hospital has to be computerized to do everything to to digitize their system so that they we can our hospital will, uh, will send the data to the NHI um, using the uh, digital way. Okay, so so the first uh, um, stage is uh, digitize everything. We call this virtualization, and the second stage is aggregation or integration. That means. Um, after we computerize, digitize all the system inside of hospital, uh, we start to link all the system together. So the information can be exchanged uh, between department uh, from the administration to all the uh, clinic department to, to laboratory to, to pharmacy to operating room. So. So all the data has to be integrated. So that is the second stage. So the third stage will be standardization and the exchange. Uh, that means in Taiwan, uh, uh, not just the inside a single hospital, uh, we need to exchange the information between hospitals, between areas. So, so it is also, uh, 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 we call this uh, a personalized or individualized uh, information system. So all the medical records belong to a person need to be exchanged and standardized uh, in Taiwan. So it doesn't matter, I travel to any place, I visit to different hospitals. Uh, my medical record has to be reviewed by different hospital and by different doctors, by different nurses. So uh, in that stage, we call the standardization and exchange. So uh, I think it takes, uh, for this period of time, for standardization and exchange, it takes, uh, it took Taiwan like more than 15 years to complete this. Uh, you know, it, um, uh, we need to, um, um, exchange our medical record from one hospital to another and to different area. It is kind of very difficult, okay? Uh, especially uh, spe uh, especially uh, in, in, in uh, our hospital has, has already digitized their own system. Uh, we need to uh, exchange the information. It, it, it took uh, more than 15 years in Taiwan to complete this task. Okay. Then the final stage will be intelligence. Um, okay, intelligence can be very wide. Uh, it includes uh, how do we use our medical record uh, smart and how do we uh, establish a uh, prediction model, prevention model, uh, 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 smart uh, healthcare, so that uh, uh, we call this knowledge based healthcare. So everything based on the data, based on the knowledge to help the doctor, to help the nurses uh, more effectively uh, take care of their patients. So, virtualization, aggregation, standardization, and intelligence. That is the four stage 
uh, we developed our uh, medical information system in Taiwan. And uh, those stages are very related to the national health insurance. Okay, I will say that if there's no national health insurance in Taiwan, maybe, just maybe, uh, we, uh, all the hospital will not uh, digitize and do all the tasks in a very short period of time. Uh, okay, not very short. It took 25 years. All right. So Taiwan's healthcare system, just to give you a very quick review. Um, some of the people, okay, this uh, um, program um, said that uh, uh, the healthcare system in Taiwan is one of the best in, in the world. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also the missions of Taiwan's compulsory national health insurance system is to provide universal coverage and the guarantee equal access to health care services. Okay, we pay is relative low and affordable amount of uh, money. Okay, we can choose any um, hospital uh, doctors we want. And the importance, government issue an IC car for everyone. So, so we have uh, this uh, IC car, a smart car for everyone. Um, Okay, um, also from the Geo World magazine, uh, Taiwan's uh, healthcare uh, uh, is also ranked in the, very, in the top one uh, in the world. This is the 2019 data. You can see uh, from different aspect, uh, from uh, the uh, infrastructure, from the professionals, from the cost, uh, we are in the number one in the world. Okay. Again, thank you, our national health insurance. All right, uh, you can see some of the data from the uh, Taiwan's healthcare delivery system. Uh, from this picture, I will, I will want you to know is that uh, um, most of the hospitals in Taiwan are private hospitals. So you can see these colors, okay? Um, more than 80% of the hospitals are private and more than 90 Oh, it's very high. Almost all the clinics are, are private. And uh, uh, also 68% of the bed are private from private hospitals. So, so I would like to know, uh, even, even in Taiwan, uh, most of the uh, healthcare services is provided by the, the private uh, agent. Uh, but, but the national health insurance covered everyone. So, so all the, uh, even, not just the public hospital, uh, even the private hospital, most of the uh, private hospital are all contracted with the national health insurance in Taiwan. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, well, some people say it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's not different. Okay, even the public or private, um, we are covered by national health insurance. So we pay almost equal uh, to see doctors in public hospital and also in private hospital, almost same amount of money. Okay, here is a very important uh, slide I would like to show you. Uh, it is a virtual private network built, VPN, built uh, for the national health insurance only. So it is uh, some kind of uh, internet, but it is uh, private, so it's a virtual private network. So you can see from these pictures, uh, Okay. Um, okay, first of all, here, the blue colored uh, cloud, uh, which is the um, uh, uh, internet data center and uh, the national health insurance headquarters is in is with is with this uh, uh, blue cloud. So um, uh, we build a, it's a huge okay, data center for the for the national health insurance. And all the, for this cloud, the, the, the brown cloud, uh, all the hospitals, healthcare uh, services from the hospital, from the um, clinics and from the pharmac uh, pharmacies are uh, all connected to the IDC. So, so all the claim data and the, all the uh, information can be exchanged between the uh, health insurance and the all the healthcare services okay 
it has been built for more than 20 years. Um, well, just for the very, uh, I think we start from NHI in 1995. In the very early years, okay, maybe 1995 to 2000, we are still using paper-based. So that takes a very, a very short period of time. So then they upgrade to all the digitized and the internet uh, architectures. Okay, so very important, uh, the other um, yellow cloud here, you can also see that uh, there is a so-called service center. Um, the service center are uh, connected to the IDC. And uh, the other way, uh, the other end, is that the service center also connect to all the government department relate, oh, sorry, related to the healthcare, uh, especially for CDC, the Center for Disease Control, which is very important in uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, so, so you can see, because the, there's a complete and the real time uh, internet connection from CDC through service center to the IDC and also the hospital sending data to IDC. So it is very uh, efficient uh, network uh, we used in Taiwan uh, to uh, connect the health, national health insurance database to other government department. So the government department can use um, the national health insurance data almost real time. Okay, o of course it is not real time, but uh, the national health insurance uh, they build uh, a very a powerful computer systems. So almost in, I would like to say that in several hours, uh, all the data will be integrated from the from this island, from the whole Taiwan. And uh, then, um, so only takes several hours for the CDC to know uh, what hap what is happening in Taiwan. So, so because we have this kind of uh, uh, almost a real time uh, internet connections. So that is the very uh, important uh, basic infrastructure we build in Taiwan. Okay, so, so I, I, will, I will need uh, all the audience to remember these architectures. So because uh, uh, all the, um, the presentation I will going to talk today is based on these architectures. Okay, we saw this architecture Yes, we, we cannot do anything, okay? All right, so, you know, there is uh, behind everything, we have a very powerful internet connections from the hospital to the NHI, we, and also uh, to the, 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 all the healthcare department in, uh, the, in the government. Okay. Uh, here is the, I, I just say that the IC chip, the NHI card. So, so this one is for the, uh, all the citizens uh, covered by the National Health Insurance. Uh, okay, the, 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 the video is okay? Okay, good. All right, so um, here is the, another card for, uh, for the healthcare professionals. So all the doctor, nurses, hospitals, uh, pharmacists, they have their own uh, health professional cars. So doctors will have two cars. One is for the their health professional car, and the, the other one is for their personal health care use. So you see, this is a, 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 a IC chip, uh, an NHI car. So it is very important. It's just like a key. So everyone in Taiwan are covered by the NHI. We have a key. For example, today, this morning, I need to enter uh, the, the Taipei hospital. I need to use this car. So, so I use this car as a key. So I, 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 I push this car into a car reader. So the car reader, because uh, the car reader will retrieve all the information from my car, from the chip. And also because of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, where I go, uh, I visit any clinics will be recorded. And also if I 
go out uh, abroad. I, I travel uh, outside of Taiwan, and I it will also be rec recorded. So this car becomes a key to access uh, to control. So I need to give this car to the in the front door this morning. So they check. Okay, okay, Professor Xu, um, you are quite safe. Uh, you you don't you didn't go any place. And you are not visiting uh, clinics uh, in a period of time, so you are quite safe to enter uh, Taipei Hospital. Okay, so so you see this car. Uh, you um, in 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 other day, I I use this car to to see doctors, and uh, in pandemic uh, uh, time, I can use this car to become access con uh, a key card control to. To enter different uh, um, building, okay. Even even in other building, I also need to show this car. Some some big building and government agents, they also want to see my my health insurance IC card to make sure I can enter uh, different department. Okay, so that is a uh, is a key. Uh, of course, when 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 the government issue this car uh, twenty years ago, we may not. Uh, uh, no, there is a COVID-19 happening uh, after 20 years, but uh, well, the East IC car really becomes a very uh, important key uh, for all the citizens. Okay, uh, the contents of the smart card, uh, well, just give you a very quick review. Um, of course, there are personal information and uh, also on health related information. And the medical data, including uh, what kind of drug, uh, I, the prescription, if I have allergies, and also be recorded. And uh, also, even even if I want to donate my organ when there is uh, something happened to me, and, and I can also uh, register as an organ donator. Okay, so this car is, uh, is very useful. Okay. Um, well, it is also very, it's just like a, a medical record uh, um, with you, okay, because I need to bring my car every every moment with, with me. So it becomes a very important uh, uh, car a, a key for everyone in Taiwan. Uh, but of course, um, this is just one of the uh, the, the media we carry our medical record uh, physically, okay, because there's an IC chip on the car. Uh, again, they are, they are, I, I, will, I will show you, there are different ways uh, for, the, uh, for the patient, for the doctor to access the uh, patient's medical record, okay? Uh, not even we forgot to bring my IC car. So, IC card is just uh, one way uh, to store our medical record and uh, to uh, use this card to uh, um, retrieve all the patient's information. All right, uh, so there are many functions with the National Health Insurance IC card. Uh, here um, we can uh, heavy user detection, management, uh, infectious disease, tracking and the monitoring, uh, daily update of medical visit data, and also uh, uh, management of other process. So, so I just I, like I say, this is a very important uh, key for everyone. Okay, uh, so, so Taiwan's National Health IT strategy plan is to establish a national electronic uh, record and the medical imaging exchange center. Um, it is systems uh, has its own electronic medical record. And also we build uh, interoperable EHR uh, system. Uh, and the EHR must be patient centric, patient initiated and the patient owned. So, uh, well, I just show you, uh, this is a story because uh, in Taiwan we complete, we almost, okay, there's no complete. Uh, so we, there's no complete in government. So we almost complete all the all the tasks uh, in 2016, uh, 2017. Okay, about that period of time. So now uh, we have our own electronic medical record, and uh, 
it is also most the patient centric, patient initiated, and patient owned. So that means that we can access our uh, data uh, anytime, any any place from the national health insurance agent. Okay, uh, okay, I think we already show these um, numbers to you. So okay, um, ninety three percent of the healthcare provider are contract with NHI. Okay, of course they are a small uh, uh, um, uh, small numbers of the uh, uh, healthcare provider. They they provide uh, um, they are not covered by national health insurance. And we have a global budget. And uh, we also, uh, the premium subsidy and the co-payment waiver for the disadvantaged uh, patients. So, so for example, you are very low income a family, or sometimes we also give this uh, subsidy to Aboriginal uh, tribe uh, where they are not uh, uh, have the, uh, not access the healthcare service is easy, easier, easily, uh, as easy as as easy as possible, like uh, city people, uh, people in, in, in big city. So Aboriginal and the low income family are waived uh, from the uh, uh, premium. Okay, uh, so the NHI also uh, use the data uh, to, they, ha they, they create lots of management tools, okay? And also they use this clinical, they use AI technology to analyze uh, those data. And uh, of course, uh, uh, they need to follow the privacy and the security uh, protection uh, regulation in Taiwan. Okay, uh, I will explain more detail uh, in, in, in my presentation. So, so uh, there are several systems so, um, built by the uh, cloud-based information system built by the uh, NHIA, National Health Insurance uh, Medi-Cloud System. So here is a very important one. Uh, uh, and also my health, here is the, okay, Medi-Cloud System is used to exchange, basically uh, exchange the uh, medical record uh, between hospital and the between areas, okay? So that it, we call this the MediCloud. And uh, My Health Bank Book, which is a system to let uh, individual, to let patient to download, to review their own medical record, okay? Uh, so that the people can download their medical record from My Health Bank Book, okay? Uh, I, I don't know why they choose this name because this is not really bank. It is not really money. It is uh, data. Okay, so so basically this one, the Medi Cloud, is used by hospital, by, by doctors, by nurses, and the health bank book is used by patient, by individuals. Okay, all for clinical information, but different. Uh, user groups, of course, and also AI application. Lots of AI application has been developed by the National Health Insur Insurance and also by the private companies. They, we, they use this data to create uh, lots of health management uh, tools for people, for hospital to use. Okay, so many data already are built in the uh, database, claim data, laboratory data, imaging data, imaging report, uh, all kinds of data. So, so we call this NHI Big Data Center. All right, um, I will show you several slides, uh, which again, all the tasks has been complete uh, uh, before 2019, okay? So the medical record exchange integration. Um, so here uh, you can see uh, by 2016, complete the EMR and exchange for all hospital in Taiwan has been complete. And uh, uh, it's very old, this is very old slide, okay? You can see the numbers here, 2000. 
So start from 2000, we, so that is why we say it took Taiwan 20 years to, almost 20 years to complete this task. Uh, to, so that uh, the, the medical record can be exchanged between hospital, between different areas. Uh, okay, it is a very old architecture. We call it a MIC, Medical Information Exchange Center, uh, MIEC 2000. Uh, it is real uh, developed in year 2000, okay? But uh, the idea uh, uh, um, has not been changed too much, okay? The idea is that uh, you can see our patient and medical doctors can use the workstation uh, through uh, internet. And uh, here, here is a control system. We have index server, we have authentication, we have web server, we have auditing uh, and the access control. So all the uh, patients and the doctors through internet access, uh, we can access patients medical record from different hospital. You see hospital, different hospital in this uh, green oval. So all the hospital, uh, even the patients visit three hospitals. Uh, we can we can integrate, we can retrieve this the patient's medical record from different hospital and the combine together and the reviewed by the doctors. These doctors, uh, um, if the doctors issue a request and uh, all the information from the different hospital for a single patient can be integrated and reviewed by the doctor if they need, if the doctor need this information. Okay, so uh, well, forget about the detail, but uh, the architecture we built uh, in 2000, it didn't change too much. But anyway, the idea is uh, we want the medical record to be uh, patient centered, to be uh, patient owned, to be patient initiated, right? Okay, um, the it is, uh, um, finally, uh, finally, we call this EEC, uh, EMR Exchange Center. So uh, all the uh, medical doctor can go through uh, this system and they will, uh, uh, from hospital A to uh, get the information from hospital B. Uh, the hospital B will transfer the medical record to a center and then the doctor can be, uh, can, can use uh, the patient's data from other hospitals. Okay, this is just the uh, idea. So EMR data and also the image data. Okay, image data is also in a very similar architecture. Okay, so new services. Uh, I need to you, I need all the audience team to remember. Okay, Pharma Cloud. Pharma Cloud is, uh, remember this one? I said that uh, the, the Medi Cloud, M-E-D-I Cloud. Medic Cloud is this uh, uh, is a bigger one, bigger, uh, more com complete system for Pharma Cloud. Okay, at the very beginning, uh, it is called Pharma Cloud. Pharma Cloud means uh, 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 the, the doctors uh, can review every single patient's prescription, even the prescription is from other hospitals. So, so you go to any hospital, um, the doctor knows uh, what kind of drugs you are taking now, okay? So that is called a pharma cloud, okay? That is the uh, older system. The new system is called, uh, is called Medi Cloud. Okay, also the My Health Bank book, okay? I put the data here because uh, it is not the real money it is uh, actually a data book okay. so include uh, all kinds of uh, clinical data uh, for this patient okay i can download it, it is launched in 2014 okay. initially so people can query uh, their uh, medical use services uh, for the past three years including all kinds of medical uh, uh, data uh, clinical data okay so these two are very important systems. Uh, the NHI use in 
to fighting the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Okay, I just need to give you a very uh, introduction, a basic introduction about our, uh, all the data from my health bank book. Okay, see, we have uh, uh, all kinds of data laboratory uh, treatment and the ICD code uh, or diagnosis and all the and uh, all uh, uh, the name of hospital so they know uh, 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 all the hospital you you went okay so it uh, doesn't matter it looks like this way okay i just show you some ideas okay uh, name of hospital all the icd 10 code and the, the drug code atc code for drug and uh, all the all, everything is included in the my health bank book Okay, so we go into the, the how, how do we use this? Okay, so we have all kinds of system. We have the network already connected. So you will understand how do we use the basic infrastructure is already there. So then we are going to fight the COVID-19 pandemics. So Taiwan government took measures from NHS to investigate the source, okay? of COVID-19 cases and just stop the spreading of disease. So of course, you see, remember that we have the IC card and we have the health insurance data bank and the those are also connected to the government agents. So, so if you are, are flying from Hong Kong to Taiwan, from Indonesia to Taiwan, from United States to Taiwan, we have this record connected to your, uh, the, the insurance card. So, so then you know um, you where you are from, and uh, if you are diagnosed as a COVID nineteen patient, then uh, we you you need to send you are going to you will be sent to the home uh, isolation. So then uh, who uh, can uh, who contact with you and uh, where you traveled need to be recorded. So so this measurement. Uh, from NGI. The NGI database and the MediCloud, you see MediCloud have become the important uh, tools to control the epidemic. Uh, medical institutions can exchange information through MediCloud, okay? So, so use the MediCloud system to exchange information between hospitals. And uh, those information will be generated uh, automatically uh, to and send to the Central Epidemic Command Center. Okay, the CECC. CECC is the 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 command center uh, in the Ministry Ministry of uh, Health. Uh, in uh, it is uh, it is special a uh, task um, uh, um, uh, group of people uh, task force. So we we build this kind of a center after the uh, COVID nineteen pandemics. We call it CECC, and all the information need to be sent to CECC. Okay, of course uh, we need to follow the law. So the Communicable Disease Control Act and the Special Act for the Prevention, Relief, and uh, Revitalization Measure for Serious uh, Pneumonia with uh, Novel uh, Pathogens. Okay. So we need to follow the, the law and this law will protect uh, the personal uh, privacy and we don't want the government to know too much right but the government the government need to know so we need to follow the law and the personal privacy and uh, the security of the public health need to be uh, contained okay so promoting digital health that is uh, very similar how, how do we fight the COVID-19 uh, pandemics okay so the medical system assists in fighting COVID-19 and the My Health Bank Group. So very important two systems. The one is medical and also My Health Bank Group. Okay. Uh, just like I say, the clinical information from different hospitals and the clinics across the country and the cities can be shared efficiently day and night. So the NHIA complete the patient center, the NHI pharma cloud. So, so this is a story, okay, just like I say, at the beginning, we call it a pharma cloud, okay? Pharma cloud uh, um, is used uh, for the doctor, for the hospital to retrieve on the patient's uh, uh, prescriptions. 
So, so, so use Pharma Cloud um, at the beginning. Uh, the doctor don't uh, don't uh, give the double doses to the patient, right? If the patient already take uh, some kind of drug, okay, aspirin, so headache for aspirin. So if the patient already take aspirin, uh, the doctor will know because the pharma cloud will tell the doctors the patients already take uh, the, some drugs for 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 his uh, headache. So you probably don't want to double the doses. Okay. So the pharma cloud at the beginning, uh, the system, which is very useful. Uh, however, so the pharma cloud system was upgraded to NHI the MIDI cloud system. So it's a bigger one uh in 2015 based on the user's feedback and the clinical need so so now the medical cloud um, system is not only uh they include the medical record but also include uh, all information like a surgical record examination record laboratory uh dental care a discharge summary chinese medicine rehabilitation uh history of allergy uh specific drugs uh, uh, some very specific drugs are used uh, for, 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 for example, for cancer, and they use very uh, um, uh, drugs for stop pain. So immunization. So you can see. So this one is very uh, powerful system for the NHI to to record all kinds of data uh, from the patient, and uh, because. This system is uh, across country, across uh, area, across hospital. So, so the, the so we can use this this uh, system for the hospital, for the medical doctor to know uh, the patient's uh, situation. Okay. So, so in uh, recently, uh, NHI also encourage hospital to upload uh, uh, different kinds of images because. You see, medical image usually is uh, is large. Okay, it takes more memory, more uh, storage space. So, so well, some of the hospital um, don't want to send all kinds of image to the NHIA. But anyway, the NHIA encourage hospital to upload all kinds of images. Uh, remember that uh, I, I mentioned uh, the the NHIA also has. AI system, artificial intelligence system. So those images are very useful to 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 um, to create uh, diagnosis, uh, uh, artificial intelligence diagnosis system based on imaging. For example, for for pneumonia, for for lung cancer, for different cancers. So for brain cancer, so for the uh, for heartache. Uh, uh, cardiac uh, cardiac uh, disease, so cardiology disease. So 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 based on imaging, we can create uh, more and more artificial intelligence uh, uh, system. But anyway, uh, it is still ongoing. So 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 you will know uh, the many clouds is very powerful system. Uh, also, it uh, they cl collect a lot of data and uh, store the NHI database. Okay, uh, so in the early stage of outbreak of COVID-19, in order to efficiently avoid the, the okay, we, we don't want the people uh, with high risk people, they, 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 they travel too much, okay? So, so the, and the risk of infectious in medical institutions, the, so, so they, they create this system, uh, this is a platform for medical institution to check patients TOCC, okay? I think you you also in Indonesia you also have the need to travel uh, history occupation uh, contact history and the class fee according to the instruction of uh, of our uh, CECC. So so the the TOCC uh, information is also uh, linked uh, with uh, the uh, 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 cloud uh, many cloud. So the doctors uh, can access. A patient's TOCC to see oh uh, if you are travel to to some other countries uh, in 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 less months so so I must pay attention to to you okay for example so under careful uh, consideration of personal data security function of TOCC are uh, incurred of course okay so just like I say we have lots of travel history uh, occupation contact history and uh, 
and the the the, the patient you, you for example your family and uh, uh who's working with you in your company kind of okay so this many cloud system include all kinds of functions or medical record surgery examination just like i said dental laboratory immunization discharge Chinese medicine allergy and uh, uh, specific medication for example uh, uh, coagulations factors drugs that is uh, used for some um, uh, cancers so some so all kinds of because this is uh, okay this kind of drugs you, you you cannot have this kind of drug because against the law okay sometimes uh, uh, if the police station and uh, see you uh, carry this kind of drugs you will be uh, you will under arrest but but uh, but uh, you saw you, you will show okay no 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 I, I i i have this drug because i i, I have a very special uh, um, um, diagnosis okay so it is also recorded in the medi cloud system okay again so it is architecture you can see uh this is an innovation okay we have my health spend book and also the medi cloud so my health bank book is for the uh, insured person okay and the medical cloud usually is used by the healthcare providers or hospital and the nhia controlled everything so so they issue my health bank book for the patient and then they have this uh, medic cloud system for the hospitals so of course here uh, you can see this triangle um okay we paid the premier to the NHIA, and the NHIA have uh, give the payment to the hospital and the hospital provide medical services to the to the patient and uh, also the NHIA issued the national health insurance card to the to the patient and the patient also uh, paid a co-payment to the hospital and the hospital send the claims data uh, back to the uh, NHIA. Okay, so all the system and also um, these two are very important um, service system for the data. So data is very is the basic. Everything is based on data. If the data can be exchanged, can be reviewed, can be shared by different by patient and by hospital, then all kinds of problems can be solved. Okay, then the My Health Spring book. A data book okay uh launched in 2014 okay a citizen can use internet and citizen digital certification uh to apply of course uh, for security uh, uh, reason uh, the patients need to apply for uh, for my health bank book after uh, your application has been approved uh, you can you can you can use the internet to download your clinical data okay so of course, after the security verification, user can search uh, for or download the healthcare information. Um, user can download the medical record and the health information for the past three years, including 14 categories. Okay, um, you can review this patient, outpatient data, surgery, prescription, allergy data, liver cancer, or oh, uh, um, laboratory. Um, uh, adult uh, prevention care, uh, vac vaccination, and uh, uh, physical measure. Okay, so so that is uh, this system has become a platform providing basic clinical data to the user. Okay, to the patient, to the patient. So the usually uh, before the pandemic, uh, which is a very good uh, platform for self health care and the management. So so you know. People will need to know what happened to, to me. I need to know what happened to me. Then I will take care of myself. Okay, so I will pay more attention to my health and the doing more for my health management. Um, because we can download, we can realize the data. Okay. Okay, during the COVID-19 pandemic, people can log into my husband to pre-order the name okay okay uh, the other good things is that uh, we have this name based the mask system so uh, I, I think uh, all of you uh, uh, know uh, 
uh, you you heard about that at the at the beginning of the COVID nineteen pandemics. You know, mask is very precious uh, uh, thing, right? We cannot find any mask in 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 the market. So, so the government say, okay, don't panic. Uh, we will we will we will we will create a system. We call this a name based mask purchasing system. So, based on your name. Okay, I, I can remember uh, in the very beginning, of course, now we can buy masks in, in all the place, but now but in the very beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we can only get uh, one person can have, uh, uh, can buy a mask. As I think it's seven masks, nine masks. I can, uh, but they, they change several times. Anyway, we, we can buy nine masks, in two weeks. So every two weeks, you can only get nine masks under your name. So who will register, who will record this? Okay. And the NHIA, behind this, there's a big government that create this kind of system. So, so you use your national health insurance card. Okay, I go to the pharmacy, I say, Okay, I need nine masks under my name. Okay, I give this, so I pay, so I got this mask, nine mask in two weeks. So in these two weeks, I can have no more mask because they know, they, the NHRA knows I already got my mask in these two weeks. So I need to wait 14 days. After 14 days, I can go back to the pharmacy. Again, you will ask me, which pharmacies I should go, right? Because the government will issue nine masks for Professor Xu for 14 days. But where should I go? I think everyone have this experience at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemics. No mask, even even it is them best mask. There's a long waiting person in front of the house, in front of the pharmacy, right? Because everyone wants to get their mask, name best mask. I need to wait in front, long waiting list, lots of people. So I need to know where to go. So based on the system, the many crowd also shows which pharmacies still has stocks. Because I, I went to pharmacy A, I went to pharmacy B. They told me no mask left. Even you, you have the right to buy nine masks in 14 days, but this, we are out of stocks. So, so I need to know where should I go, right? So there's a system, okay? Usually I use my phone, my phone. There's an APP. So I check, okay, in my area, close to me, in my walking distance, which pharmacy I should go. They're still not out of stock of mask. There's also a system. I need to use this APP to do that. Okay, fortunately, we already go through that period of time. Now we can find mask any place, anytime. But anyway, the system helps a lot. So we can use this uh, to pre-order, okay? Again, I don't want to wait in front of the pharmacy. So how about that? We pre-order my mask and uh, from pharmacy X, and I just need to go to pharmacy X at some time and some day. So they will have my pre-ordered name based mask there for me. Okay. So there's a, it's a long story. Okay. Um, it took uh, several months for the Taiwan government to solve this problem. But anyway, the name based mask uh, is really a uh, good system. Okay. Uh, Okay, also the COVID-19 vaccine uh, 
testing and results are also established in my health bank, including the result of permanent vaccine re record, record a COVID-19 rapid agent test, and also SARS-CoV-2 real-time RT-PCR test are also uh, included in the my health bank and also in the medical cloud. Okay, I will show some of the, the screen. So this is my health bank. If you log into the website, you can see we can make vaccine appointment, even the vaccine appointment. Okay, so recently uh, Taiwan, are, are, well, our vaccine uh, shot are not very, are, are, are still um, ongoing. So we need to make the appointment, okay. Uh, using uh, my health bank book system and also we can you can review your rt pcr result from this uh, my health bank uh, book uh, systems okay i just show you several uh, screenshot okay you, you can use you can also use your uh, uh, cell phone there is a powerful app for you to use and uh, um, also the tools for managing personal health in my health bank book, uh, it's, it's not just for COVID-19, okay? You can see here, uh, we have three years medical record. Uh, we can also, there's a smart system we call this a CKD, uh, kidney system to evaluation with examination result. Okay, um, okay, that is good because um, most of people they don't think they have a serious uh, ckd problem uh, but you can go to this system it will show you okay use color if you are in a yellow color you you you, you probably need to pay more attention to your kidney right and, but if you are in a red color uh, you are really serious um of course and also it also uh, provide dental services okay they and also uh, education. Okay, if you have problem with your kidney, then you should. Add, uh, it will give you. Okay, uh, you are not uh, really good, and uh, you in your condition. So you you should read and uh, some information, and you should uh, go to visit your doctors. For example. Okay, visualization, um, and also they put remarks. Uh, they they, hold, they have disease risk predictions uh, for liver disease. Uh, but currently, they have there they, they are several. Uh, the very popular two are the liver uh, disease prediction model and the CKD uh, uh, kidney disease prediction model. Okay, and uh, and also uh, uh, like blood pressure, glucose, and. Uh, you uh, if you if you do have this information, it will show uh, with this uh, my health bank book. So you can see vaccine all kinds of data from the NHI uh, claim data, laboratory medical image, and also vaccination uh, organ donation from the external data, all put together, integrated together into the my health bank book and also the MediCloud. Okay, so, so using uh, these uh, kind of systems, uh, we can fight uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemics, uh, assist in pandemic investigation by providing medical information, right? Uh, we diverting the suspected cases to uh, designated community laboratory. This is very important. So. So we need to, we don't want the patient, all the suspect cases to rush into the emergency department or the hospital. So we need to tell them, okay, if you are a suspected case, uh, go to some place to have your RT-PCR test, to have your uh, uh, a pathogen test. So do some tests, uh, some simple tests to screening. Uh, if you are really uh, diagnosed and uh, you go to the hospital, Okay, so you, you don't, we, I don't, we don't want the patient to rush into the, uh, to the uh, uh, emergency department of hospital. It is very dangerous. Okay, uh, and also warning remark in the, uh, in the NHI medical cloud to manage cases and reimburse. Okay, it is also very important. 
So COVID-19, we don't want patients to go to hospital. So the bird, we cannot stop them seeing doctors, right? So, so the telemedicine becomes very important. So the NHI change their policies. Uh, they make telemedicine more easy. They, they even reimburse more and more telemedicine for people. If they are in home isolation and home quarantine. Okay, if we are already in home quarantine, I want to see doctors. Okay, I can use the telemedicine and it will be covered by the national health insurance. Okay, before the uh, pandemics, um, we do have telemedicine, but we need to apply. Uh, and those, and then the 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 NHI will will pay, will reimburse the the telemedicine. But now, um, if you are in special case, uh, you 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 need to use telemedicine, okay, uh, to to see doctors. So so the NHI also reimburse those telemedicine for you. Okay, so okay, just like like I said, the name mask mask distribution system. They have a different uh, version, version 1.0, version 2.0, version 3.0. So we can purchase it at uh, pharmacies. We can, uh, we can online purchase in mask. We can pre-order from kiosk. So uh, stage, different stages, uh, we, we make it easier for the, for the people to get their mask from different place. Okay, so no longer uh, waiting a long, uh, uh, people uh, waiting list uh, uh, in from the hospital uh, in from the pharmacy. You can you can see uh, the, in in the very uh, early weeks uh, for the uh, after the outbreak of uh, uh, pandemics, some other other patient waiting outside of the pharmacy just want to get uh, uh, their uh, night mask, and uh, you know it takes even they are already 80, 90 years old the people waiting for several hours outside the hospital we can see this news we don't want that okay so so we create online purchasing we create pre-orders purchasing okay combine covid 19 with national health insurance database um, um, so the uh, they the national health insurance administration provide the uh, cecc with a daily name list of uh, this home quarantine oh sorry home quarantine and home isolation, a daily analysis and the statistics of data for patients with uh, respiratory disease and uh, diarrhea. So, so respiratory disease and the diarrhea, it can be suspected cases. So these are also recorded. And if you do have this syndrome, and if you go to see a doctors, uh, the doctors will know. And also uh, will be reported to the CECC. Uh, providing access to the national health insurance database for public and the private sector to join fighting. Okay, so the NHI also share the research result of using NHI database with academic community and the public. So if you want to use data to analyze those uh, um, for for public health purpose, you can you can you can apply for the data from NHI. So the NHI establishes a search engine for users to search papers which has used the NHI data. So if you want for a professor, if you want to do some kind of research, you can go to the NHI to apply data from there to do your research. And if you want to see uh, the anyone want to see the research result and the published in the paper. You can go to the search engine to do that. Okay, diverting the suspect case to 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 uh, this uh, community laboratory. So, so yes, uh, to to establish a, a community screening network uh, for COVID nineteen, and uh, and we and expand the capacity of medical services. The the NHI set up new uh, selecting rules as a, a designated community laboratory on the. NHI e referral system. So this is another referral system. Just like I say, um, uh, we will uh, tell the, the patient to the suspected if you have some kind of syndrome, uh, where you should go. Maybe you should go to your local uh, laboratory and have their their screening test there, and not and instead of going to a big uh, medical center. 
Uh, with this, uh, so the doctor in local clinics can rapidly help the suspected COVID-19 patient screened in community and stop suspected case to rush into the emergency room, okay? So lower the uh, possibility of a spread of COVID-19 virus in hospital. Um, and uh, for the referral, the cases, NHI MediCloud, okay, MediCloud system uh, can indicate if the case is not screened yet. So. So the patient will be recorded and the doctor will know if the patient need to be screened before you visit the hospital. Okay, warning remark. Uh, the MediCloud, okay, the, also the NHIV put the travel remarks on the, on the people who were kept in home quarantine and the contact remark on people who were kept in home isolation. So, so if you are already uh, need to be uh, in the uh, quarantine and isolation, uh, the medical club will be uh, well recorded uh, in the database. And also uh, aircraft cr uh, crew member, uh, medical professionals and the residents and the net, uh, those people are long-term care are all um, high risk a person so they are also remarked in the medical club, okay so if this those people visit a doctor um, the doctor will know or you don't you don't need to tell them the doctor will know you are you are a high uh, COVID-19 risk uh, group This is the TOCC. I think uh, you, uh, you, you do have the similar one for your country. So travel history, occupation, contact history, and also class. And all, all this information will be uh, linked uh, with the My Health Bank book and also the MediCloud systems. Okay, so so you can see uh, there's a remark from TLCC and guidelines on screening and uh, 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 in, uh, if you are not screening yet, uh, won't, there's a warning uh, here for the uh, uh, doctors and uh, yourself to be noted. Okay, so TLCC included in the MediCloud. So you can see if you are uh, ISO, related uh, home isolation you have contact history here i'm sorry this is in chinese but you can see this date and uh, all the description here you have travel history if you are home in home quarantine and you have guideline on screening and occupation the clustering if you are a high risk uh, group of people and uh, if you are even contact with high uh, risk group of people and the screening warning here you if you have this warning then you 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 are a suspected case you need you need to go to uh, uh, some place for your uh, fast uh, COVID-19 screening okay they reimburse telemedicine for people in home isolation and home quarantine and for their self-management um, managing medical capacity reducing workflow workloading uh, uh, for uh, of hospital um, uh, we starting from May 15 uh, this year the designated medical institution are allowed to use telemedicine um, the medical institution provide service uh, of our patient by telemedicine without submitting so they don't need to submit submit a uh, approved plan so the telemedicine becomes a uh, uh, well, telemedicine, we, we talked, uh, we, we discussed so many times in Taiwan, uh, if the uh, NHI should improve, uh, should, should uh, reimburse the telemedicine. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know if we, if we should thank these pandemics because finally they agreed to uh, the telemedicine should be covered by the national health insurance. Okay, uh, anyway. Um, so you, if you have urgent medical need, uh, uh, well, uh, you, you, uh, 
if you are isolation in quarantine, you, you, you can have uh, telemedicine arranged by the local health authorities, okay? And uh, no, uh, no need to be approved by the NHIA. And uh, private issue, okay, of course, uh, doctor can use a, a consolation room. Oh, sorry, consolation room in a medical institution in telemedicine. So they have a special room for the telemedicine, okay? Uh, the NHI will cover the cost, okay, during the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so we have urgent medical need. So you can go to the local authority, uh, health authority, and they will arrange for the telemedicine for you. And the, the health service provider will contact the uh, patient uh, to arrange uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in a telemedicine uh, situation, okay? And of course, if the if the patient need uh, drugs, the patient need to go to the uh, pharmacies. Uh, in the COVID nineteen pandemic uh, time, and the, the they have delivery system for you, so you will get uh, your drugs uh, at home if you are a home quarantine or a home isolation. Okay. Okay. AI assist the technology to respond for COVID nineteen. So they also. Uh, these are two examples. Uh, they also work with the uh, academics uh, uh, people for to establish uh, some of the uh, uh, X-rays uh, imaging AI system for for the diagnosis. Okay, these two are working with the national. Uh, I think it's working with the uh, um, uh, National Taiwan University Hospital, and also working with the uh, National Chengkong University. Okay, so they. They developed uh, um, AI system for uh, chest X-ray uh, diagnosis. Uh, okay, name-based distribution. I already say uh, mentioned that uh, we have uh, different uh, um, versions, so so we can use this uh, system to buy our name-based uh, mask. Okay, so version one, you can see there are many people waiting outside of the pharmacies. We don't want that. So version two, we can use our app to order our mask and also we can go to uh, any kiosk system to pre-order uh, our mask okay some very details i will not go very detailed if you have any other any questions we can go back to discuss this because so uh, I, I don't think we have enough time right so anyway um a person at the pharmacy is a person online purchasing that also we can go so you can see because we have a complete network connected. So connected network from pharmacies to NHIA, from NHIA to the government. So, so all, it, all kinds of services is just the, the data. We do have the data, we can record it. The data has been recorded. So all kinds of services can be provided. Okay, okay. So virtual NHIA, so again, uh, we want um, we have the physical IC chip card. How about we don't need that because we can use the, so they, they also create a virtual uh, NHI card. So uh, this is a new new services, okay, model. So for telemedicine, okay. So I, I don't need, I, I just need to go to the NHI Express, uh, APP, Express APP. So we can use the QR code for medical service and, and the laboratory test. I, I don't even uh, use a physical the IC chip card. So this is very good. So we want the goal is to zero touch medical treatment and the reducing the risk of people going out for medical treatment. So if we can use the QR code to do all kinds of services, that will be good. Uh, okay, subscribe for help our country. So again, because of this uh, pandemics, some hospitals say, oh, because this pandemic, no one come to the hospital, you see? So, so doctor will say, okay, see, I earn less than, if you are earn less than 80% compared to the pre-COVID-19 years, the NHI will give you some subsidy. So, so that means uh, if you are really cannot well, you, we don't want the small hospital just close, okay? They, they close their clinics. We don't want that. Um, how about you still operate your hospital? 
especially in a very remote area, right? Because we don't want the clinic just closed. But, but if you say that you, you are really lose money, okay, then the national health insurance will try to provide some kind of subsidy for you, okay? All right, uh, I think I will take very few minutes for some other uh, applications we use the My Health Bank book. Uh, okay, that may be interesting to our international uh, audience. Okay, we work with uh, very lots of people from Southeast Asia area, of course, including Indonesia. Uh, we it is called Asia eHealth Information Network e e -H a, 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 okay, I, I, I don't know how to spell, but anyway, A E H I N. And uh, we create lots of laboratory. We try to share our uh, technology with different countries, and we want to try to collaborate with different countries. So we, there's a laboratory called Standard and Interoperability Lab, Asia Community Interoperable Lab, COI. So we work with the Philippines, Malaysia, and also you see these pictures. I think these are from Indonesia, from Thailand, from Philippines, from India, from Malaysia. So all kinds of uh, uh, different countries uh, are in uh, join uh, Asia e Health Information Network. In Taiwan, we have the Smart Healthcare Center for Excellent Taiwan, uh, collaborating with COI. So there are many uh, systems we develop. One is for the blockchain and the file basis cross country personal health record. Remember that my health bank book now is also is is only used in Taiwan. But but based on my health bank book, we try to establish a platform. It can be used by different countries here by, by our country in southeast asia area we want to share our technology so the first is the blockchain and the file base the cross-country personal health record so exchange platform just like my health bank book it is it has been used in taiwan we can use this platform to share our personal health record across countries. Okay, I will not go to very detail because uh, I, you already have this uh, slide, right? You can, if you are interested, you are welcome to contact us. We can share this. This platform has, has already been used by different countries like Philippines, uh, Thailand, and uh, uh, Sri Lanka, and in Indonesia. Some of the persons already using this this blockchain to, to exchange their uh, medical record. Okay, so based on that, okay, this is the map. Uh, sorry, we have delay. Okay, so you can see uh, other country in this area can share all the information, all the technology. We, we, we like to share this technology to different countries. Okay, I cannot go to very detailed system architectures, but uh, we can have, if you are interested, we have another three hours to, to explain this. But anyway, the system is already there. You are welcome to use. Okay, we have published. So, uh, wait, wait. There's a delay for the... Okay, good. We publish the paper, you may want to take more information, read more information from this paper, blockchain based personal health record exchange. Uh, you can see uh, all people from different countries are already uh, the author of this paper, okay. And also, uh, this is a standard we use file, FHIR, I, I think maybe you already know HR7 uh, file uh, international standard. So it is international standard architecture. So don't worry about, uh, 
oh, uh, we have different uh, uh, information architecture in Indonesia. Don't worry, this is an international standard data framework. Okay, I, I don't have time to show very detail. So just want to show you it is really international standard architectures. Okay, that is the uh, again, we work with uh, many people from different countries. How can we support for pandemics? So based on that, I will show you several applications. That is the blockchain HL7 file a platform, right? And uh, based on that, we publish another paper, which is a disease variance and a case tracking system for COVID-19. So again, imagine that since we already have a platform, which is a cross country medical record exchange platform. So we can do the disease surveillance case tracking, right? So that is, uh, we work with some other uh, people from different countries. We, we publish this paper. So use that platform, we can do the case tracking of COVID-19. Okay, very detailed. I, I can show you some of the screen. Okay, here is uh, some of the uh, platform uh, screenshot for case tracking. You can see, uh, okay, there are different colors line showing this patient traveling from different area from European to to Thailand to Taiwan kind of, and all the uh, disease diagnosis and treatment will be recorded. Uh, so the doctors in Taiwan will know um, where the patients come from. Again, recently, we are going to publish a paper for vaccine passport based on the same platform. The vaccine passport can be easier integrated and uh, uh, constructed. So detailed architectures, uh, I don't have time, but anyway, which is very convenient vaccine passport platform. Uh, if you go to other countries, uh, you go to other hospitals. We don't need to have contract between countries. We just need to have agreement between hospitals, even agreement between doc medical doctors. If you are a medical doctor registered in this blockchain, you are a patient who already received vaccines you can travel around the world given the other doctors approve your patients already received the vaccine. So it is a very, very archi uh, easy architecture, convenient architecture we developed for Southeast Asia country to use. Okay, summary. Taiwan can help. National health insurance plays and this plays a very important role in combating combating COVID nineteen. Just like I said, we have uh, standardized the medical record, and uh, we create a blockchain uh, platform. We have a global infectious disease surveillance and cost, uh, case tracking model for COVID nineteen, and also we have digital vaccine passport system for that. And also pharma cloud, MediCloud. MediCloud is a very important system uh, used by hospital uh, and by the doctors, by the nurses to get uh, uh, a patient's data. And uh, my health bank data book, uh, which is a very useful system for patient to use to review data for myself. Okay, those systems combined together give us very powerful weapon to fighting COVID-19. Of course, today, uh, my presentation is based on information and based on data. Of course, vaccine shot are also are two, are, are, are the basic. So go to get your 
vaccine shot earlier. Uh, that is the principle. Uh, but anyway, on the other side, we do provide a very good information system when we want to share this technology with our friend, uh, Southeast Asia countries. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Professor, for giving such an informative and interesting presentation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we appreciate it again if you could fill out the attendance and evaluation form provided by the link on the sharing screen, which will be shared later. And also, now are the time for questions and answer sessions. I would like to have three questions from the participants. Please raise your hand, or maybe you can write it down in uh, on the chat room. Okay, okay. So uh, if you have any questions, okay, here. Oh, okay, good, good, good. All right, all right. Uh, okay, okay. Good. So there are four, Professor, four right. questions. Okay, uh, the first question is, what is the security database in Taiwan looks like? Have you experienced a data leak? How to overcome this thing? Okay. Okay, uh, let me answer the first question. The, uh, first of all, uh, the, today we talk, the, the, the database we talk about is so it's called the National Health Insurance uh, Database, um, which is um, host by the NHIA, National Health Insurance Administration. Um, actually, no one can really touch the database. Um, you see the, the internet, uh, right now, uh, only the virtual private uh, uh, network can be, can access the data. So, it, it is not, it is very secured uh, internet. Um, it is not, uh, it is a closed, I, I would say that it is a closed internet. Um, and uh, it is not like internet open to the public. So only selected agent can access the database. Uh, that is one part. Uh, second part, the data set itself, it is not, uh, there's no real personal ID in there. So if you are really uh, getting data, okay, using some kind of technology, a uh, break the, the, the wall, you get some data and uh, which is not, which has no personal information in there. So they have uh, some kind of encryption. So even you got the data, you can still, uh, you cannot identify the personal information. Uh, as I know, there is no any experience the national health insurance database has been broken of course there are several cases uh, for the hospital database broken by the by some other uh, virus uh, high-tech people <coughs> but uh, as i know there is no case maybe they don't say that <laughs> but, but i we don't know there's no case those database has been broken. Okay, as I know. So they do have lots of uh, uh, security um, process uh, around this database. Okay, let me go to the second question. Okay, Professor, for the second question. Okay, can you show the show on the screen? Okay. Thank you. Share. Okay, the second question, <coughs> population data be accessed by all agents, 
especially health agencies, whether in hospital clinics or others? And uh, what are the regulation and the systems to integrate this? Hmm. Okay, so uh, well, we'll, we'll keep the, uh, can you keep the question on the screen so I can see? Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you want to share? All right. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me, let me read again. Uh, population access, uh, okay. especially health savings. All right, okay, okay, okay. Okay, let me, let me answer this question. Uh, 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 do you remember there's a internet connection, right? Mm -hmm. So all the information, uh, there's a national health insurance. The information sent from the hospital, all the health care professionals to the IDC, the in, uh, internet, uh, the data center, integrated data center. And uh, go through with the service center, uh, all the government, okay, the government agents can access the database. Through the uh, service center. Uh, of course, the Minister of Health and uh, well, depends the need. Okay, sometimes the, uh, the, the, I think the Department of Agriculture and also the de Department of uh, in, in, in Interior uh, 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 Affairs, well, depends on the, uh, uh, their task and the necessary task, uh, the government agents can access the database. From the hospital side and from the patient side, I mentioned we need to use the Medi Cloud system and also and the My Health Bank Book system. So those two are the new services provided by the National Health Insurance. Um, five years ago, it's hard to imagine because the National Health Insurance, they want hospitals to send data to them, but they don't share the data back to the hospital. You see, yeah. five years ago, they don't want to share the data because they say the data are owned by National Health Insurance. But after they, they after several, I think they, they changed their policy. They decide to share the data. So, so right now, by using the Medi Cloud and uh, the My Health Bank systems, all the hospital and uh, the patient can retrieve the data back from the National Health Insurance to review the patient's data. So I think the question is, yes, uh, mm, hospital clinics, and they can access the data and uh, the regulation, okay. <coughs> regulation is that uh, you need to have your own virtual private network. And uh, from the hospital, you need to use the VPN. And uh, you can you can only access uh, those patients give you the right to access. Okay, we, for, so the hospital cannot do that. Okay, I want to all the patient. I want all the people's data. No, it is not. E when the patient give you the right. Okay, I sit in front of the doctor. I give you the right to access my data. Right. So the, the doctor can go to the National Health Insurance database and retrieve my data back. And uh, of course, for the, for the pandemic, <laughs> because of the COVID-19, uh, they release lots of policy. I, I need to say that. Um, okay, even I don't give you, I, give, I don't give the right to the doctor. The doctor can still <laughs> access my, my data because if I, if I show I'm coughing and I have a fever, the doctor will say, oh, retrieve my data and say, oh, you travel from United States, go to home quarantine, right? Go to home isolation. Immediately, I will go to another department, not uh, 
not uh, these clinics. So, well, yes or no, um, because of the pandemics, uh, some of the regulation it uh, broken. Uh, I was, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if uh, after the COVID-19, uh, we will change the policy again. Okay, I, I really don't know. Okay, let me go to the third question. Uh, are there some application used in healthcare system in Taiwan? Um, mm, 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 I think so. How is the process of integrating the system and uh, whether the Taiwan health, health, health card can be used in various ways, including medical? Okay. Uh, okay. So to answer the third question, uh, of course, there are, yes, there are many, many applications. Uh, well, if you are asking inside hospital, Okay, I, I need to say that inside of hospital and the outside hospital, they are different. So today, my presentation, most of the topic I covered in my presentation is outside the hospital. It is an integrated system provided by the National Health Insurance, provided by the CDC, provided by AHIN, my work. But if you are talking about the, the inside hospital, yes, there are many uh, system uh, application used uh, for the inside hospital. For example, uh, the uh, uh, health IC car. So uh, the health IC cars really store uh, some of the uh, medical record. So from this uh, health uh, uh, chipped IC car, the doctor can the doctor medical doctor can retrieve the patient's data from the IC car, of course, and uh, um, just like I said, um, uh, the national health insurance uh, platforms already integrated in Taiwan, so I can have my IC car in hand, and I can go to any hospital I like and any uh, clinic using this IC card. When I have this IC card, uh, the, 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 any hospital con, uh, contracted with the NHIA will know, Professor Xu, you are currently uh, covered by the National Health Insurance using this IC card, okay? I, I see car. <laughs> okay. I should show you. Okay. Okay, the next question. Okay. Mm. Okay, this is my health insurance card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. I need to carry it with me. <laughs> this, is key. This, is, this is almost a key in the pandemic. Uh, uh, I need some some place. Uh, they need this key to enter the building. <laughs> All right. So uh, next questions. Question number four. How to convince people to use an H? I, is there an application for having NHI? Hmm. What does government do for who don't have it? Oh, okay. Uh, I know Indonesia has already, you already established the NHI, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Since uh, several years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, Yes, let me go back to remember, if I can remember, uh, I'm old enough. 25 years ago when we established the NHI. Okay. Before we have NHI, uh, in Taiwan, we do have lots of uh, health care insurance. I think it's very similar to other countries. Uh, we do have uh, the health care program for uh, special uh, workers like uh, 
uh, you work in uh, in the industry. I, I'm a farmer. Okay, farmer, especially for farmer. Farmer, they do have their uh, special healthcare uh, programs. For farmer, for some special workers like uh, uh, teachers, for uh, special work like uh, uh, work worker in, in chemistry uh, plant, for the um, worker for, for doctor and nurses. But yeah, there are there are many different health uh, insurance program for different uh, um, workers. Um, so after we launched the national health insurance, uh, of course, for the first several years, um, well, I need to decide if I want to uh, switch my health care program from health program for teachers to health programs for national health insurance. Uh, okay, the good things is that in Taiwan, we call it national health insurance, right? Which is national health insurance. And it's owned by the government. So gradually, the government stopped. It, it stopped the other health insurance program for farmer, for example. It's not really stopped. You can still have a health care insurance for farmer, but it is just like an add-on. Okay, if you have national health insurance, the farmer health insurance will add on to your national health insurance. So you, you have more benefit like this way. So if you would like, if I want to answer your question, um, yes, the people, if the people don't want to use NHI, you have to, well, in Taiwan, it's almost like uh, you, you have to use if you don't use you you are you are really hard to get health care services because more and more hospitals are contracted with the national health insurance if you don't have national health insurance it's hard for you to get health services all right so that is the the basic so if you have more like your health care plan for farmer health care plan for teachers it is an add on to your NHI. So people will like to have more, right? More benefit. And uh, so that is my, my, my answer. And, and of course, if you are enrolled in NHI, your data in Taiwan, you can share your data. You, can, you, you go to any other hospital, you can still have your data there. So. It doesn't matter you go to hospital A, hospital B, hospital C. All your data can be exchanged. That is an, that is a benefit for NHI. So you don't so the doctor can take care can take care better for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you want people to have more, you add up. So all the other uh, information uh, health insurance is is kind of add on to your nhi so people will tr will, will be will have more benefit so that uh, that uh, people get happier all right i'm not sure i answer your questions okay that is the uh the first you, question. for the fourth question I want to ask something. Uh, a tourist got this health insurance. If not, how to track their activities? All right. So yes. Um. No. Um. If you are okay. Okay. If you are foreign traveler, uh, you are not covered by the health insurance. Uh. Right. You are right. So. The, so the, the your data will not be recorded in the um, 
official MediCloud and the My Health Bank. But we do have the system to track. To remember, we have TOCC, so we have the screening uh, uh, at the airport. So if you are a foreign traveler, you need to go through this screening system. Uh, I will say that those screening system will create a temporary record for you even you are an international traveler. So if you are travel from other country, um, you go through the TOCC and you go to the uh, screening at the airport and you need to, uh, the policy in Taiwan right now, you have to stay in the home uh, quarantine for 14 days, okay, for 14 days. Uh, well, if you are air crew, air, airplane crew, you have a different different regulation. But anyway, if you are normal people, you need to stay in the home quarantine for 14 days. And uh, in these 14 days, you have to uh, res you have to take uh, you will take uh, the RT PCR. Yeah, and it's antigen. You need to uh, go through the screening three times. Okay, at the beginning, in the middle, at the, at the end of your quarantine. So you need to take several times of your screening. So, so all this um, data result will be recorded in, in I, I think, it, I believe, I believe it's in the Medi Cloud. Okay, they do have lots of, they, they do create uh, lots of uh, record for foreign uh, traveler. So, so after you stay in Taiwan, you will be recorded, you will be tracked. Um, of course, you don't have this uh, 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 IC card yet. Uh, but but uh, that is the policy now. However, however, if a foreign student, our worker, you need to work in Taiwan, uh, you will get uh, the health insurance insurance all the foreign students in Taiwan uh, after the home quarantine uh, you will I think uh, after several months I, I don't know how, how how long it takes maybe six months okay four months six months all the students all the foreign traveler will be covered by national health insurance so you will get your own national health insurance card even you are an international traveler. If you got the permission to work in Taiwan, if you got a permission study in Taiwan, so you will have your own health insurance card and you need to pay your premium. Okay. Okay, thank you, Professor. So there's another question. Okay, is there any... Uh, any level in NHI like a citizen can choose if they want to join level one and one level okay um in Taiwan we don't have levels there's no labels in national health insurance we we every everyone Okay, basically everyone's equal, even you are very rich, you are, you are very poor. Okay, like, uh, like uh, what I mean, the, the, the richest people in, in the world, in, in, in Taiwan. Okay, we, we got the same access to, to healthcare services. So there's no level. Uh, but depends on your income, depends on your income. The, you pay different amount of premium for the national health insurance okay there are it's just like a income tax so if you have low income you pay less if you have high income you pay more so really like income tax there are different levels i cannot remember how many levels for the premium but we, they we do have different level for your premium you have low income tax, you have low income, you pay less. 
you have a high income, you pay more. But basically, there are not too much difference. As long as you are covered, you can choose whatever hospital and you can choose any doctors you like, okay? We do have some special regulation for, for just like I said, disadvantaged people. They may have very, very low income. Okay, they, they have their family, they have, uh, they have very low income family. So we have, uh, we have your, their, uh, their premium will be waived. Or you are very special rigid. Okay, sometimes I will not say that it's really Aboriginal people, but some remote area, they have really disadvantaged situation in getting health care. We do have the NHIA do have the special regulation for them to waive to reduce their premium payment. Okay. Okay, thank you, Professor. So for the participant, is there another question? Please raise your hand or maybe you can write it down on the chat room. Is there? Okay, I think there is no any questions anymore. No worry. Thank you. Thank you. Well, oh, anytime. Uh, if anyone have questions, uh, you can give the question to your professor, right? Okay. Okay, professor. The professor can, can send a question to uh, TIHTC. If I have time, I can answer for you. Okay, Professor, thank you. And if, and if the COVID-19 pandemic is over, I'd like to go to Indonesia to sure. visit your university. I, I went to Indonesia many times. Okay, Professor, thank you. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, finally we come to the end of this Q&A session. Before I hand it off to the host of the AHTC, I want to draw a conclusion from what the speaker said. So most of the hospital in Taiwan is a private post hospital. 99% population covered by national health insurance and not only in public hospital, but also in private hospital. And the population also feels satisfied of the project because it is easy to access and timely service affordable cost and using health IT adoption. So the important things of the medical information system in Taiwan, the step is the first virtualization or digitalization of medical data for education, service, and also research. And then the second is aggregation or integration after computerized startling the information together. And the third is standardization and exchange. Exchange the information between area of the medical record belong to person need to be exchanged of standardization. Uh, and it took Taiwan like more than 15 years to complete. And the fourth is intelligence or smart include how to establish prevention model and it's called knowledge-based healthcare. Okay, thank you for your informative presentation, professor. And I use the topic of our visiting lecture today, giving us some benefits of the way of how to face this pandemic of COVID-19, especially by using of any database, including health insurance. Okay, for the next session, I will hand it off to the TEHTC staff. And thank you for participation and good afternoon. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. So uh, you, you, you probably use this one. Yeah, use this one. Okay. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, can you can hear, hear us? You. Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Okay. So for okay. the best part, uh, we would like to have a photo session uh, together with all the participants. Okay, so, we have a picture okay. session. Right? Yes. So please uh, turn on your camera, please. All right. Okay, okay, we have picture sessions. Uh, we okay. take picture for all of us. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. 
Also, let me inform to our students and lecturers here to open their camera. Excuse me, ask your students. Are you there? Please open your camera. Turn on your camera, please. All ISK students and lecturers, please. We'll take a picture together. Okay. Next. For the first one, uh, please just smile to the camera. So, okay. okay smile. Three, two, one, smile. Okay. And thumbs the, up is okay, didn't uh, <laughs> everyone? Uh, yes, please show us your thumb. Thumb up. Thumb up. This is like a very typical Taiwanese uh, photo pose. <laughs> All you know, right. Everything is great, and we just show the thumb. Okay, please. Smile, three, two, two one. one, smile. Okay, for the best one, uh, we would like to uh, present a proceed, the certificate of this visiting lecture. So uh, please, uh, participants, let's just uh, take a photo with a pro. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, I got it. <laughs> Okay, three, okay. two, one, smile. Okay. One more. Uh, three, two, one, smile. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Congratulations, uh, Professor. Uh, it's your okay. time. Yeah. Okay, wow. That's so amazing. Thank you. Thanks to Professor Chen Yesu who has shared very useful knowledge with all parties, especially for the students of Aisha University of Surakarta. And I also say thank you to Ms. Siska Ningtiasta Basari, who has guided the course of the presentation of the material so that it runs actively. Okay, for the everyone, it's amazing. Thank you so much. And especially for Aisha students, pay attention, please pay attention. Do not forget for the presence list. I will share now on the chat box and please fill it correctly, guys. Yeah, here is it. The present list for the students. You can click on the chat box also. All right, don't forget to fill the presence list. Okay. Okay, save it, students. Yep. Okay, that's all. We come to the closing session of International Visiting Lecture Activities today. Once again, we would like to thank to all those who have participated in this event from Aisha University of Surakarta, Mr. Professor Chen Yesu from NTU NHS. Also, thank to TIHTC, TIHEC, all the representatives from Taiwan, and all ISK lecturers and students. Because of you and our God's help, today's event has finished well and smoothly. We also hope that the cooperation that has been established between Aisha University and TIHTC can have positive impacts on the development of these two institutions and can continue to run year by year with various kinds of international activities in it. And hopefully uh, the COVID-19 pandemic will end soon and live from the earth so we can carry out international activities to countries around Asia, Europe, especially coming to Taiwan. Also, we apologize if during the activity there were lacks mistakes and we are sorry for the inconvenience. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Let's end the international visiting lecture agenda by saying Alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah, Hirabil Alameen. Good afternoon, everyone. See you at the next international event. See you all. Wave your hand. Bye-bye.